When I was first starting to learn to code on my own, I got into the habit of following code along tutorials on YouTube. By the time a couple of months gone by, I had made about a half a dozen decent looking projects and I had an idea for a project that I couldn't really find hints to or tutorials to do that project online. So what I did is I sat down at my computer, opened up my IDE, gave my fingers a little crack and froze. I had no idea where to even start. For those of you that don't know, this is the exact experience of realizing that you're in tutorial hell. I had spent the better part of a quarter watching my screen, watching other people code, and I took away basically nothing from that experience. I had hardly learned anything. I was pissed, to be honest with you. It's not like I wasn't aware of this trap. I had definitely heard about it before, and I thought I was in the clear, but when that happened, I realized that I was right in the thick of it. So how did I end up here, despite my best efforts to the contrary? Well, I would say, other than my own complacency, which certainly played a role in it, it was the smoothness of the delivery of these tutorials. I know this sounds kind of weird, but stay with me here for a minute. If you search for basically any coding tutorial online, especially YouTube, I think you'll find pretty much the same thing that I do, which is that these tutorials are virtually flawless. Sure, there might be a little typo here or there, or you know, some minor bug that takes just a few seconds for the instructor to correct might pop up every now and then, but ultimately, people that run these coding tutorials and post them on YouTube are, it, it's not the style to be transparent about the bugs that you run into while you're actually developing these things. This is fine, actually. I don't really have a huge problem with it from the point of view of the creator. It takes a lot of work to develop a project to the point where you're ready to display it to the world, have debugged it more or less, and are confident enough in your coding abilities and the code itself to put it out into the world as an instructional video that takes a lot of practice and uh, a good amount of confidence. So I commend people putting tutorials on YouTube. The other thing is that they just don't want to waste the viewer's time by having to sort through bugs that, you know, they maybe could have fixed before they posted the tutorial. So it's all fair game. I'm not mad at the people posting tutorials at all. But are you seriously telling me that you can code for 45 minutes and make a browser based game with virtually no bugs? right away, and hardly any pseudocode for that matter? You can't, or at least most people can't. This kind of perfection takes a long time for people to achieve if it is achievable. And look, maybe I'm jealous or something, but I, I don't think that's the case. I think what's more likely the case is that these projects are heavily developed, heavily scripted, and debugged before the camera even starts on the creator's end. This is done primarily to prevent bugs that are unnecessary from popping up during the production phase of shooting. And again, I don't have a problem with it except for it does feel like there's some dishonesty to that approach. It worries me, especially for new learners like myself, because I think that one of the big things that contributed to me getting stuck in this cycle is that I thought that that's what coding looked like when I first started it. I didn't think that after I gained some proficiency that I would spend a ton of time debugging. And that is a reasonable amount of time that goes into coding. A lot of time is spent debugging. And so watching these tutorials kind of gave me the impression that once I knew enough, debugging would kind of just go away. I knew that this wasn't the case, but seeing these tutorials done so smoothly kind of adds to the already huge kind of infer inferiority complex that you tend to feel when you're learning to code. So it was, it, it just overall just kind of leaves you with a yucky feeling. It worries me that this is the case because new learners like myself see these tutorials and I think they become convinced that coding is easy once you get a handle of it and that we should be able to just think up a series of functions on the fly with no writing or pseudocode beforehand and go through developing a code base virtually with no bugs. This isn't something we get convinced of because of ego, it's something we become convinced of because it's literally in every single tutorial on YouTube. And it's dishonest. It's dishonest because it's never that polished. It never goes as planned when you're creating a project. It's always much harder than you think it will be eventually. And especially when you're beginning, it's not uncommon to spend many minutes looking for a bug, if, if not longer, that ends up just being a missing semicolon in your CSS or something ridiculous and kind of silly um, such as that. Maybe you put a space before your array iterator uh, period and that's 
breaking the entire program. Things like this come up all the time and it never comes up in coding tutorials. And I think it's a little bit dishonest and it's a, definitely a problem. People learning have a role in this as well though. The reason that these bugs are not kept in and that these tutorials are so polished is that if, if they were kept in, we would skip ahead to just see the end product in the tutorial. We wouldn't want to have to go through the debugging process with the person. It, it doesn't make sense when I articulate it that way, but I do see my patterns kind of going in that direction. I think that if I was watching a tutorial and a bug came up that took six minutes for the tutorial creator to isolate and fix, their watch time is going to drop dramatically at that time. People are going to skip ahead. People are going to go to a different video that is free of bugs and makes the whole process seem easier. Um, so the complacency of the learner has a ton to do with this as well. That's definitely what I found myself doing. When you follow a tutorial, you're not holding the reins. The teacher is. So when you come across a problem or when the teacher comes across a problem, you don't take ownership of that problem. You don't see it as your problem, even though it is. If you were coding this from scratch or even from a dated blog that that was outdated and needed some updating, you would see that problem as your problem and you would try to find a way to debug it if you were truly trying to learn how to code. But because it's in a video and somebody else is taking care of it, you just assume that they're going to figure it out because they posted the damn video. Why wouldn't they figure it out? So it takes a lot of ownership away from the process. So what can we do to fix all this? Well, it's bad news. It's got to get harder. Sorry. First thing, you need to stop relying on video tutorials so much. This is going to suck if you've been doing it for a while, like I had been, uh, but it's going to be the quickest way to take back ownership of the learning experience, which is the biggest thing that you're missing right now if you're stuck doing video tutorials all the time. Start doing coding tutorials on outdated coding blogs, for example, instead, so that you have to actually dig in and use Google and Stack Overflow to figure out what's outdated, or better yet, just write out your own pseudocode for a project and Take a crack at it. See how far you can get before looking up any frameworks or solutions to the problem that you're trying to encounter. The second thing is to learn and relearn the fundamentals. Especially when you're beginning, most of these tutorials cover almost primarily fundamentals in the coding language of choice. The overwhelming majority of tutorials online, there's a lot of advanced ones, but the overwhelming majority of them are beginner friendly because they're going to get the most views and they generate a ton of attention because of that. If you take the time to learn the fundamentals, once you master them, you'll be able to much better navigate the bugs that you'll inevitably come across along the way, whether you're creating something that is simply uh, a tutorial based uh, project, or if you're making your own project and you have no crutches like I did when I froze at my IDE at the end of my tutorial, uh, hell. <laughs> Once you master the fundamentals of your given coding language, you'll be able to much easier identify and debug the issues that you come across as you come across them instead of having to rely on people in tutorials to point you in the right direction and literally just fix the thing for you. Third, if you wanna learn via video, but you wanna give up the over-edited YouTube tutorials, Look into streamers. There's a lot of Twitch streamers online that will um, do live code alongs and uh, live code reviews and things like that. And when they're doing that, they have to do the debugging live. Um, so it's gonna be less engaging than the YouTube tutorial is gonna be, but tuning into a Twitch streamer and watching them go through their process of debugging is gonna teach you a ton about how to identify when and where a bug pops up, the nature of the bug, and how to approach debugging it. This is a great way to learn without being completely handheld every single time. You can literally watch somebody go through it live instead of somebody on YouTube choosing where they make their cuts, like I do quite often. <laughs> At a minimum, this will give you a more realistic preview of what it looks like to actually code out a project bugs and all. So that's it. There's just a few ways that you can prevent yourself from falling into an endless pit of despair like I found myself in a little while ago. As a recovering code along addict, consider this a warning. You can save yourself a ton of time learning to code by making it just a little bit harder on the front end of learning and forcing yourself to go through this debugging process on your own instead of getting a couple of months down the road, having some like sort of polished looking projects that you had no idea how you put together and then not even be able to approach 
a legitimate problem in code or a legitimate project that you want to pursue and have no idea what to do. By not relying on tutorials that only superficially teach you, you will save yourself a ton of time learning. Good luck.